This is the technical difficulties of applying citation needed. Joining me today, he reads books, you know, it's Chris Joel. I'm third in fast. Everybody's favourite Gary Brown. Gary Brannan. Well, I brought a tanker of clotted cream, but the pump's broke. <laughs> Bounces man on the internet, Matt Gray. Hello, YouTube. Yeah. In front of me, I've got an article from Wikipedia, and these folks can't see it. Every fact they get rides a point and a ding, and there's a prize for particular good answers, which is. Mystery Biscuits! And today we are talking about Victor Lustig. On French Top Gear, how do they announce the Stigs won? Victor Lustig! <laughs> <laughs> <Hey! Yeah. laughs> can, I, can I get a vote from the gentleman here? Is that a golf clap or is that a biscuit? Well, it's not a biscuit. It's not a biscuit. It's not a biscuit. It's, it's, really not a biscuit. Biscuit. it's fine. I'll tell you, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, I was, I was kind of hoping that it was kind of some lusty gentleman, Victor Lusty. Oh. Oh. I, lusty isn't right, but was certainly, he certainly had the interesting life. Vivacious, was he? Sorry, are you telling me that someone called Victor Lusty had an interesting life? Yes. I think with a name like that, doesn't it come with the card? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had many types of cards uh, printed up for him for many sorts of dealings. Was he a spy? Oh, no, more, more towards the dark end of those arts. Was he a spy at night? No, With Patrick that, Moore. Yeah. <laughs> Impersonator. Impersonator's not quite close enough. I need to hear something something a little bit more dastardly. Was he a cad and a philanderer? Conman. Conman oh, is exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. the words I wanted to hear. Hence why he's got the business cards for many identities. Many well. identities, many particular jobs. I think it was, he was one of the most successful con artists of all time. Hang on a minute. Is this the bloke what sold the Eiffel Tower? Oh. oh yeah! Well, he's won. So everybody else, go home. <laughs> he says the bloke who sold the Eiffel Tower, isn't he? Yeah, yes. Yeah. You are missing a key word off the end of that sentence. Multiple times. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, absolutely right. Victor Lustig is the man who sold the Eiffel Tower. <sighs> and it worn through the bottom. It had worn all. Oh, you know, I'm oh, giving you, you a point. You, no, no, I'm making get, a cobbler's joke. Get here. out! <laughs> get out! Sold. Sold. <laughs> oh. Lift it up one oh. side. Hammer it on. <laughs> Give it a bit of a buff as well. Yeah. I mean, the what thing kind is, of grip? <laughs> what kind of grip do you want on the bottom of Eiffel Tower? You're going to be walking on ice. <laughs> the thing is, I'm still giving you a point. 1925, it was disused, run down, probably going to be demolished. It was basically mm. done for like, it was bit, It was like the Millennium Dome, wasn't it? It was put up as a temporary thing, as part of an exhibition, mm. to show the French could put a giant penis into the sky or something <laughs> like that. Which, let's face it, is what towers are. They are yeah, got a yeah. bigger one than you. It was a temporary thing, technically, wasn't it? So everyone mm. expected it would be taken down and used for valuable, I don't know, patisserie space or something like that. Yes. Well, what would they actually, if they took down the Eiffel Tower, what would they, what would they sell it for? Scrap. Yeah. White pole. <laughs> <laughs> Get your Blackpool spares here! <laughs> Mayor of Blackpool, as I imagine there still is, or what stands up for you, it has come to my attention there is a tower larger than the tower we have on the promenade, yet it has come on the market, I have secured it at a reasonable price. Doesn't <laughs> have a ballroom! <laughs> Does not have a ballroom or a circus, which I'm always disappointed it isn't actually at the top, because I thought that would be <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a, a, an elephant on a beach ball going around the top of Blackpool Tower. <laughs> On the glass floor. Yeah, that would be great <laughs> entertainment, that would be. Oh, the lift will open and loads of clowns will come out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, they would have sold it for scrap. How do, how do you go about selling the Eiffel Tower? You approach Baron, someone very quietly and yeah. you, who, you, who you know is A, an idiot and B, has a lot of money, and you say, <gasps> Thingy Jones was looking at this. I, I think you'd want this. You're getting a point again, Matt, because he invited six scrap metal dealers to the same meeting. And quietly said, I'm, a, I'm from the French government, here is the business cards and the station I've had printed up. Who would like to buy the Eiffel Tower yeah. for scrap? You don't, you don't want Michelle getting this, you can have it. You can make <laughs> yeah. it woman. Michelle, the scrap dealer. <laughs> Some bloke from Rotherham in terms of with his wagon. <laughs> I can get it all on for your lowest bid. Okay, <laughs> you tell me a burly French name. Jacques. That's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> He put all six of them in a rented limousine, toured them round, and worked out which one was most enthusiastic and gullible. Can anyone guess what the name of the dealer he selected was? And this is not as difficult as Michelle. you might think. Yeah, but Jack. Andre, the last name is just a French word you learn in school. For Gar. Him. Bonjour. Uh, something you might eat with chips. Frites. Moule. Cheval. <laughs> <laughs> That's horse. Horse and chips. It's horse. <laughs> La Plage. What? But that's the, the beach. beach. <laughs> that's where you eat them. <laughs> what the hell do you eat with chips? Piskin. 
That's not the right word! <laughs> That's a swimming pool! <laughs> Poisson. Poisson, I'm a boy. <laughs> Andre Poisson. <laughs> Andre Pissine. <laughs> Bonjour, je suis Andrew Swimming Pool. <laughs> <laughs> You okay there, Gareth? Kill him. Oh my god, I wonder why I couldn't get served. Les biscuits, les biscuits, s'il vous plaît. I'm sorry, France. Uh, André Poisson um, did indeed. Not André Poisson. <laughs> uh, André Poisson uh, was absolutely all for it. Someone close to nearly killed it off. His wife? Yes. Poisson's wife. Oh, right. Thought something was suspicious. Clever, the, clever the, there. The deal was too quick, the deal was too secret. Well, I imagine the big thing that would probably attract their attention to them wasn't a for sale sign on the side yes. of the Eiffel Tower. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't in the news. <laughs> so, how did he deal with that? How's a con artist deal with nearly being rumpled? By conning her. Did he woo her? What, like a ghost? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I am the ghost of Monsieur Riffel, I want you to buy my tower. <laughs> Did he tie her to the top and get a big... Twirl well, his mustache! I've got, I've got a, a train up the side <laughs> of the Eiffel <laughs> Had an airship approach very slowly. <laughs> no? No. No. Paid her. Uh, he confessed with an entirely fake confession saying he was a government minister trying to do this on the cheap and get a bribe. Oh! <laughs> what did that mean that Lustig got? A, a smaller cut? Quite the opposite. A bigger cut? I have a point. <laughs> He got, he got the money. <laughs> what colour is a red yeah. fire engine? <laughs> Lustig got the money for the Eiffel Tower and the bribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good work, sir. <laughs> he took a train to Vienna with a suitcase full of cash. Oh, that's the way to do it. Because it checks here. Well, interwar France. You, how else are you going to do that? You're going to have a suitcase full of cash. And you are going to be able to get out of town... Without anyone spotting Which is, of course, the least suspicious way of paying anyone is to hand over a briefcase <laughs> full of millions of francs while he goes, well, thank you very much. I'll just get on this immediately waiting train next to me in first class. Here's the keys. Here's the keys to the... To my garage. <laughs> How work? Because towers need keys. You must remember that. Yes. And um, the plans are inside. <laughs> Toodles. Light cigar <laughs> with newly minted notes. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened next? Well, I imagine he turned up with his gas cutter, started sewing away the bottom leg, and someone ticked him off. Uh, no, no. Did he check with the government? Um, Did, well, he, does he sound like the kind of guy that would do a lot of due diligence at this point? <laughs> <laughs> having already bought it, having not done any due diligence, <laughs> suddenly <laughs> now's the time. <laughs> well, what would you do if, if you'd been conned into giving someone an enormous amount of money? I would not admit it. Point. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah. Poisson was too humiliated. He did not go to the police. It's like going around saying I'm a f***ing idiot. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> this apparently credulous man came to me, said he wanted me to buy this major national structure for a ludicrously low sum. Uh, <laughs> said don't ask any questions. Of, told me not to ask any questions. So and I, I just didn't. didn't. <laughs> and I gave him a bribe as well. And I, yeah. and, uh, oh, I threw him a bung and he got on a train and he could be anywhere now. You must do something about this. So where was Lustig a month later? Was he still in Paris? Selling it again. You can both have a point. You're absolutely right. You have six more scrap dealers in a conference room in Paris pulling the exact same con a second time. He didn't try... Uh, he didn't go for the hat trick, did he? No, he didn't. He wasn't able to. Oh, you get nicked? Oh, he got caught? Uh, not quite. He managed to evade arrest. Um, I'll, but one of the scrap dealers found him and braided his knees in. Uh, one of the scrap <laughs> dealers... One of them knows the other one. No, what, um, I'll give Chris the point. One of the scrap dealers went to the police. Hmm. Um, with the counterfeit contract and worked out what had happened, managed to skip the town and evade arrest again. Mm. Yeah. Um, which is the story of the man who sold the Eiffel Tower twice, but there are a whole load of other cons in here that he did. What was his money printing machine? A machine that printed money. Wrong. <laughs> a person? No. I mean, it's a machine that didn't print money. Have it printed point. bad fakes oh. and he sold that to yeah. other people who wanted to run Yeah, absolutely off. right. You have another point for hey. that one. That's absolutely right. So he probably had a machine that spat out actual notes. So did the machine that just did photocopies or something. It was a box. 
Um, how long do the box take to print a uh, hundred dollar note? As long as it takes for a man to slide a hundred dollar bill through from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> you, you Some sort of right? Turing test. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ted, as long as it takes long, to leave the town. I'm sorry, as long as it takes to get the train to Vienna. Okay. You're, you're gonna get the, he was actually on a boat at this point. So it was, it was, <laughs> he was plying the, the, the transatlantic ferries. Um, so as they were sort of coming into New York, he would confess to someone who he had. He had this money printing machine. And it printed a hundred dollar bill, but it took about six hours to do it. How? How can any machine take six hours to print? Because it was really, ages ago. Really intricate. Really intricate. It's got to do everything. And slowly, over six hours, a hundred dollar bill comes out of this machine, and another one starts to come out. I said, but it's, "It takes so long. You know, I'm I'm, I'm looking to sell it." <laughs> it's just a two actual hundred dollar bill. Yes, isn't it's, it? it's yeah. spitting yeah. out two hundred dollar bills and then a load of blank paper by the time he's left. Oh, for God's sake, people. <laughs> oh, it's run out of ink. I'll sell you some of that. <laughs> Send him Hewlett-Packard by any chance. What, bring the ink out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll flog you the ink for a ridiculously large <laughs> fee. <laughs> there is also the, the black dollar scam, or the, or the money wash scam. Do anyone know how that works? Is that like invisible ink? Quite the opposite. Is it like visible ink? In- I keep getting the <laughs> points. Really obvious things here. Yes. Was it invisible? Yes, Matt. Have a point. <laughs> I'm loving this binary points thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just drew another Eiffel Tower on something and tried to sell that to someone. Oh, was he trying to give you notes that had been spoiled in the in the ah, mint or something? That's the, that's it. It's yeah. a, it's a trunk full of completely painted over money, completely dyed money. Yeah. Uh, with the idea that they will sell you this and the chemicals to clean it for a fraction of its cost. And they will demonstrate it on the few hundred dollar notes that they've already yeah, done, actually right done with those thing. chemicals. And, the and it'll work. Just paper. And the rest, yeah, absolutely right. I have a point. The rest of it is just completely paper. Or they need more funds for more of the chemical mm. fluid, which is quite expensive. Yes. Lots, again, like printing. The place I used to work a while back, someone tried something, sim- not something similar like a con. They used to lived abroad and wanted to pay for some services. So she sent us a photocopy of two five pound notes as if that would pay for it <laughs> <laughs> That's, is that a scam or is that just <laughs> I'm just like if you could do that you wouldn't need money would you <laughs> <laughs> you would need a fiver <laughs> I felt like sending them back a photo a drawing of 20p's change <laughs> Yes, he was also part of a counterfeiting ring, just printed fake money, which is a heck of a lot easier in the 1930s. Mm. Mm. Um, he was arrested in 1935 by federal agents who gave him away. After all this operational security, after all this... I'm gonna his wife! His wife. wife. His mistress. Oh. Oh. Yes, he had, uh, he had similar dealings with romance as he did with the business. Um, he was carrying on with multiple women, and one of them got jealous and gave him Was away. it the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, uh, promptly, uh, promptly arrested. Um, they opened a suitcase. They found money. No, just some expensive clothing and a key. Mm. Key took them to a locker. They opened the locker. What was in the locker? Money. Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tumnus <laughs> with money. <laughs> <laughs> A fake so, Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> that if you wash him, he's actually just two hundred dollar bills in a box. <laughs> uh, no, you're absolutely right. Counterfeit money. Fifty one thousand dollars worth of counterfeit money, which was more than enough to convict him. Well, that's because you wouldn't get a fifty one thousand dollar bill for a start. <laughs> <laughs> just a single note. <laughs> Five. One. I can set- zero. <laughs> zero. Zero. I'll sell you this for fifty grand, mate. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Only he would have notes that are dry wipe. <laughs> Arrested, uh, taken to trial, pled guilty. What happened a day before his trial, though? He ran away. Uh, it, yes, he managed to escape. I was going to say, it turned, point. it turned out his guilty plea was a fake. <laughs> 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 they washed it, it said, not, not guilty. guilty, I'm on the train to Vienna. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out the man in court was actually some, I don't know, a cardboard cutout of him that just flops forward at the end. <laughs> How did he do this? <laughs> yeah, he managed to escape the Federal House of Detention, which is either a prison or... Sort Brothel. Of really, yeah, really good nightclub I was going for. But... Or a very strict school. And he, he, skipped, he skipped town. He took a, a train, presumably, to Pittsburgh, and they caught him nearly four weeks later. But... Yeah. Yeah, sadly, it ends with him in Alcatraz uh, catching pneumonia. But well, what, what was wasn't the, really pneumonia. When he tried to sell to the other inmates, <laughs> yeah. what was listed on his death certificate as his occupation? Was it just a dollar sign? Git. A banker. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you the point. It was it was apprentice salesman. But yes. <laughs> oh. that's, that's pretty much Alternative it. Alternative gag: estate agent. <laughs> oh. Accurate. Uh, so congratulations at the end of that, Matt. You win this week's show. Uh, congratulations, you win a Formula One champion steel water boiler. It's Sebastian Vettel's metal kettle. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I need a brew. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we say thank you to Chris Joel, Gary Brennan, Matt Gray, I've been Tom Scott, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Uh, tell, tell me about Fugu. I saw it on The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Like impersonator implies you go, what are you cackling? <laughs> Sean Connery on with Patrick Moore. <laughs>